Lava, or Large Language and Vision Assistant, is a large multimodal model that combines a clip vision encoder and the Vicuna LLM. You can play around with it via an embedded hugging face component if you don't want to download anything. Let's learn a little bit more. So the abstract explains that they use GPT-4 to generate training data and that it does well on unseen images and instructions. Oh, and it's open source, which is always nice. There's then a bit more detail about the way that it was pre-trained and fine-tuned uh, before we get to some examples of what it can be used for. And I've got to say, these examples do look extremely cool. I didn't realize that you can do this sort of thing. Uh, so let's give it a try for ourselves. We're going to do this using a really new project called LlamaFile by the, the folks at Mozilla. So this lets you distribute and run an LLM with just a single file. And so if we look down in the quick start, you basically download the file, give it executable permissions, and then, and then run it. Uh, alternatively, you can go to the release page and download it from there. So if we come over to the terminal, you can see I've got the Lava uh, Llama file down on my machine. We'll give it the execute permissions for my user. And then we just run it like as if it was any under executable. We'll just tell it don't automatically launch the browser. And it runs for a few seconds and you can see it's loading everything. And then we've got, it tells us where it's now listening on port 8080. So we're gonna navigate over to there and you get this nice little UI. And let's upload an image from my computer of a little uh, cartoon cat. Uh, and it will then try to describe it to us. You can see it says it's a blue and white cat with two hearts on its face. I can then ask it actually specific questions about it other than just getting it to describe things. So I'll say, what's unusual about this cat? So it says the unusual thing is it's blue eyes, which is not typical for a cat. Uh, I thought it was gonna point out the shape of the eyes. So let's ask it about the shape. Uh, so it says, yeah, the, the shape is hearts, which is a, a playful and cute touch. Let's now I had a look at the, what was happening on the network calls and figured out there's like an API behind this. So I kind of copied that and, and got ChatGPT to help me convert this into a script. So let's just have a quick look at that. So this is uh, lava.py. So at the top, we've got a bunch of uh, imports. If we then come down, we've got our lava class. We've got this is the system prompt that's being used by Llama file. Uh, we put in the, the URL and then we'll just define the system prompt. And then we've got the parameters that it was using. We then got a function uh, for processing any images. So we're going to allow us uh, allow it to take in a local image or a HTTP image. So starting at the top uh, for handling HTTP, uh, and so it sort of downloads it and then gets the bytes uh, from the image. Then we've got the local one, and then finally we're going to open it up and get the encoded uh, bytes for the image. We'll then come down. This is our completion function. So we start at the top. This is going to be the prompt. So it's going to kind of combine. Uh, the image and then potentially an extra prompt if you want to provide one. We'll then process the image. We'll put it all, that image and the prompt all into a data variable. And then we'll send a post request, request and we're going to tell it to stream the results. If we then come down, we're going to say if we've got it, if, if you've told us to stream, we're going to create a response generator inside there. We're going to look through each line. We're going to strip out uh, everything after data and then we're going to yield it back and then we'll just return that response generator at the end. If you've told us you don't want to stream the data, we'll do a similar thing, but this time we'll just collect all the data into the into a content variable and return that instead. Now let's have a look at how to use that. So we're going to launch the IPython REPL. We'll import the, that Lava class, items utils class that I use to, to, to display images on the terminal, and then I, I prefer the, the print function from the rich library. Let's initialize the lava. And now we're gonna give it the path to an image of me. And let's just display the image so you can see what it is. So this is a, a YouTube thumbnail from a previous video that I made. Uh, so we're gonna just time this and we'll tell it, hey, I want you to complete, uh, call lava complete. Uh, we'll tell it we wanna stream and then let's iterate over the response and print it out to the screen. Now it takes a few seconds to output the first token. So I'm just gonna speed things up a bit. Uh, but you can see it comes back and it says, hey, we've got a picture of a man in glasses wearing a brown shirt holding two parrots. And then it has a bit of other information about me as well. And you can say, see it takes just under seven seconds to give the whole answer. Uh, so I wanna know whether it thinks the parrots are really on my jumper. So those parrots are, are not, uh, they are generated by the Canva tool. Uh, so let's see what it says. So yeah, it's, it's, it thinks they are, so it says they're on, the, they're on there. Uh, and it says they're kind of uncommon in nature. So that's kind, of, that's kind of interesting. Let's give it another image. So this one is Cristiano Ronaldo. So we'll just display that so you can see what it is. Uh, let's ask it, do you know who this footballer is? So it takes a few seconds, but it says, yes, this man is, uh, is Cristiano Ronaldo. So that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. Um, so I fed it like some kind of custom images that I chose, but I thought it'd be kind of more interesting to just find some random ones. So there's this hugging face dataset called Mid Journey Messages. And this has like a 
loads of images created by the Mid Journey Gen AI tool. So you can kind of see, look over here, it's got the prompt and then it's got the image and then a bunch of other metadata as well. And so I'm just gonna go and navigate uh, to through through the directories and I'm just gonna get the, just one of the Parquet files that has this metadata and I'm gonna download it to my machine. We're then gonna create a Streamlit app. So let's create, open the app.py. We're gonna import Streamlit at the top and pandas. We're then gonna just set uh, the config. So we'll just have it so it fills the whole screen and we'll give it a title. Then we're gonna create a function, a cache function that's gonna read our parquet file. We'll read the file, we'll pick one row, one sample row, and we'll grab out the prompt text and the image URL. We're then gonna create ourselves a two column uh, container. We'll put the image in one of them and we'll put the prompt in the other one. And then let's go over to the other tab and we're gonna run Streamlit. And then if we come to our browser, you can kind of see what it looks like. So we're gonna have an image on the left and then a prompt uh, on the right. And if we refresh that a few times, you can kind of see what it's going on. Let's now come back and we're gonna just update that script. So we'll go to the top and let's import Lava and we're gonna import a custom uh, Streamlit spinner. Let's then come down and we're just gonna update the columns line so that we have an extra column. And then we'll come down to the end and we're gonna add into that extra column. We'll say, hey, we're gonna have an empty uh, Streamlit uh, container and then we're going to write uh, we're going to then check uh, has the first chunk been rendered we'll put a spinner in there uh, until it has and then we'll iterate over the the results and as soon as we see the first chunk has been rendered we're going to get rid of that spinner and then at the end and uh, all along the way we're going to be writing the content that we've got so far into the chat box uh, and if we now come back to our browser again we can sort of see so let's let's refresh it and we can see this one here is about interior architecture give it a few seconds and lava comes back and it says hey this is about interior design and the layout of a living room so that's not that's not too bad it then explains a, a bunch more information as well let's try another one so this one here is about kojo fighting so give it a few seconds so and it obviously doesn't really know what kojo fighting is but it says we've got a green hat and a purple jacket it looks like they might be preparing for an attack so that's kind of that's kind of quite close uh, and one more so this one is an attempt to create a disney or pixar which to be honest i don't think it really looks like that uh, and let's see what it comes up with. So it says it's a woman wearing various funny and quirky accessories, which is probably probably a reasonable description. So I have to say this worked way better than I expected it to. Uh, but as Andrew NG pointed out in a recent LinkedIn post, large visual models like this will probably need some more fine tuning to work on the types of images that we'll encounter in specialized domains. Uh, but if you like this video, check out this other one up here where I show how to build an image search engine using the clip embedding model.